The Pope plans to save the world by a seven-year action plan, Laudato Si, where he invites the whole world to unite in saving the environment. What will be his ultimate solution for this ecological emergency? Welcome to Truth and Bible Prophecy. This is the first video in a playlist I'm making called Laudato Si, Sunday Law is Coming. May you listen with an open heart as I present to you Laudato Si, preparing the world for Sunday Law. Cari fratelli e sorelle, con l'enciclica Laudato Si, may change is the defining crisis of our time and it is happening even more quickly than we feared. No corner of the globe is immune from the devastating consequences of climate change. Rising temperatures are fueling environmental degradation, natural disasters, weather extremes, food and water insecurity, economic disruption, conflict and terrorism. Sea levels are rising, the Arctic is melting, coral reefs are dying, oceans are acidifying, and forests are burning. It is clear that business as usual is not good enough. As the infinite cause of climate change reaches irreversible highs and people are looking for a solution and now is the time for change and a concrete step is needed for this ecological emergency. Revelation 13 verse 12 And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. In his encyclical Laudato Si, Pope Francis has claimed that global climate change, formerly called global warming, is due to human abuse of the environment, particularly the market-driven and consumer-minded capitalist countries. He has claimed that if this problem is not urgently addressed, it could eventually lead to the extinction of human race. Therefore, he has called upon the world leaders to make the climate change a top priority by signing and enforcing international environmental protection treaties. Francis said, the earth has suffered from wounds that we caused due to a predatory attitude. Hospita suffers from ferites that we provoke because of an attitude of predatory que ci fa sentire padroni del pianeta e del irresponsible use of natural resources these wounds manifest themselves dramatically in an unprecedented ecological crisis and have been further highlighted by the coronavirus pandemic we therefore need a new ecological approach which transforms our way of living in the world our lifestyles our relationship with the earth's resources and in general the way we understand people and the way they live their lives francis said i would therefore like to invite everyone to undertake this journey together he said referring to the action platform and adding that only by working together we will be able to create the future we want, a more inclusive, fraternal, peaceful, and sustainable world. There is hope, Francis added. We can all collaborate, each with their own culture and experience, each with their own initiatives and abilities, so that our Mother Earth returns to its original beauty and creation again shines according to God's plan. This is the long-awaited program for putting Pope Francis's ecological encyclical into action throughout the church. In their website, laudatosiactionplatform.org, on October 4, 2021, the Feast of St. Francis the Dicastery for promoting integral human development will begin offering Laudato Si plans. 
The Laudato Si Roadmap is a seven-year process. The first year is dedicated to community building, resource sharing, and developing plans to achieve the Laudato Si goals. That is followed by five years of concrete actions to achieve the goals and then a final sabbatical year to praise and thank God. Laudato Si, paragraph 72. And then Pope Francis makes statements about the Sabbath. The biblical tradition clearly shows that this renewal entails recovering and respecting the rhythms inscribed in nature by the hand of the Creator. We see this, for example, in the law of the Sabbath on the seventh day. God rested from all His work. He commanded Israel to set aside each seventh day as a day of rest, a Sabbath. Genesis 2, 2-3, Exodus 16, 23, and Exodus 20, verse 10. Similarly, every seven years, a sabbatical year was set aside for Israel. A complete rest for the land. Francis emphasizing a complete rest for the land is essential. And what day he is suggesting we should universally rest? The answer is in paragraph 237. Laudato Si, paragraph 237. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Sunday is the day of resurrection, the first day of the new creation, whose first fruits are the Lord's risen humanity. The pledge of the final transfiguration of all created reality, it also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. Pope Francis is bringing in the stage Sunday rest as the solution, where in this day people can rest and the environment can breathe and recover. Sunday, the day of resurrection of Christ, he emphasizes the word law, pointing at weekly rest that forbade work once a week. Are we seeing something prophetic in the Pope's Sunday agenda? Are we finally going to witness the fulfillment of Revelation 13? As revealed in prophecy, the second beast, the land beast, which is United States of America, will force all nations of the world to pledge their allegiance to the first beast, the papal antichrist. Prophecy clearly indicates that it is the destiny of the second beast to help the first beast recover its power. The land beast will exercise the authority of the first beast on its behalf, compel all to worship it, set up an image in its honor, and impose its mark. Everything this land beast thus is in the presence of the first beast. The land beast USA will help the sea beast, the papacy, recover its power by helping tear down three walls that prevent the papacy from exercising world dominion. The first wall is the one between Protestants and Catholics. The second wall is the one between church and state. And the third wall is the one between Catholicism and secular-minded worldlings. The papacy ruled under this worship or else system in the Middle Ages. Millions were persecuted and killed under this church-state form of government. Following this very act reproduces the image of the church-state form of government the papacy rules. And this is exactly what the United States will do in the future. Of course, one of the Pope's provision of the Save the Planet Crusade is making Sunday a day for the environment to rest, for families to strengthen their ties by attending Mass, and to give the poor a break from what he perceives as the endless and dehumanizing cycle of capitalist life. The not-too-subtle insertion of Sunday at the end of the encyclical appears innocuous at first sight. Laudato Si, paragraph 237. Regarding Sunday, the encyclical states, On Sunday, our preparation in the Eucharist has a special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day that heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Rest open our eyes to the larger picture and gives us renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. And so the day of rest, centered on the Eucharist, sheds its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor. I notice that the Pope makes a statement about the Bible Sabbath being Jewish. That is to impose 
that the seventh day Sabbath is an exclusive Jewish thing, while Sunday is the new Sabbath for Christians. This is a classic error of Catholics and majority of the Protestants today. The Bible clearly states in Genesis 2 verse 3, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it before sin entered. Sanctified means to be set apart for holy use. Adam and Eve are the only human being at creation for whom the Sabbath was set apart. Adam and Eve were not Jewish. So therefore, an honest study of Genesis 1 and 2, when the Sabbath was created, there were no Jews and there was no sin. Jesus made clear the ultimate confusion about the Sabbath and who is it for? Mark 2 verse 27 says, The Sabbath was made for man. He made a clear statement that the Sabbath was made for man. The Greek word here used is anthropos, where we get the word anthropology, the study of mankind. Let us read Isaiah 56 verse 6. Also the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord to serve Him and to love the name of the Lord, to be His servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take it hold of my covenant. Prophet Isaiah said, both Jews and Gentiles should keep the Sabbath. Also the sons of the stranger, everyone that keeps the Sabbath, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. The statement of Pope Francis in paragraph 237 is error on a biblical standpoint. The Pope has a new agenda for the churches. He wants them to work together on Catholic social teaching and liberal causes, and this will help us overcome our prejudice and misunderstanding. Make no mistake, these ecumenical gestures by the Pope are designed to change our feelings towards Rome. It is an invitation from Rome to Protestants to end the protests. But as true Bible-believing Christians, we know what the papacy's ultimate purpose is in bringing global climate to the forefront. My brothers and sisters, you have to focus your eyes on Jesus' Bible truth and look at this through prophetic eyes. The seven-year action plan of the Laudato Si is a precursor to condition the world in accepting a mandatory Sunday law. And people who still choose to ignore Jesus' final warning signs from Revelation 13 and 14 will easily accept the mark of the beast. Pope Francis's approach here is crafty. It's not going to come under a guise of religion or system of beliefs. It does not matter if you're an atheist, agnostic, Buddhist, Hindu, and regardless of ethnicity, Francis says we all need to be one in this Sunday loss to rest the environment. In their website, laudatosiactionplatform.org slash pledge your commitment, the Pope is strongly urging everyone to pledge and commit to this process-oriented plan. Registering is your expression of support to this plan. This reminds me of the religious leaders at the time of Jesus. They needed the support of the state to have Jesus crucified. On what issue did the Pharisees, the religious leaders at that time, wanted to kill Jesus? Answer, John 5 verse 18. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. It was in the issue of worship specifically on the issue of the Sabbath, and the followers of Jesus were also persecuted, those that share the same belief and practices as Jesus. Bible prophecy reveals that history will repeat itself. The argument that was used against Jesus 2,000 years ago will be invoked once again. Brothers and sisters, unity at the expense of Bible truth is abomination to God. His word is the true light unto our feet and the light to our path. Psalm 119, 105. Pope Francis will gradually set up this Sunday Mass for people to receive the mark of the beast. The power to change is only found in abiding in God's word, being faithful to God's commandments. Stand with Christ, not with the Antichrist. Stand with truth, not tradition. Kindly type in the comment section, I stand with Jesus Christ. Kindly support this ministry by liking this video and sharing this video. Thank you friends. May you stand true to Jesus 
and may we all continue to seek truth in Bible prophecy.